friends and welcome back. Hey, before I get started on the video, I wanted to point out in the lower right hand corner of all of my videos, you'll see a little icon there. It's actually supposed to be scissors and there's kind of an oval in the center. And if you would just click on that and then you can subscribe to my channel. Subscriptions mean the difference between us staying on YouTube and not being on YouTube anymore. So please make sure to click on that subscribe button. Thanks a lot for hearing me out. And here's what we'll be doing for this week. This is just your standard terracotta pot, no finish on it or anything. And I'm taking this clay pot sealer there is a link below this video to my website where you can purchase this. And I'm going to spray about three coats around the inside. What was that? There's been some kind of a frog in my throat <laughs> off and on. Sorry about that. So I let it dry between each coat. And you don't want to skip this step. It's really important that you kind of waterproof and seal the inside part. If you don't do this when you water whatever plant is inside of here, it's going to seep through the terracotta to the outside, ruin your paint, ruin your decoupage, and we don't want that. And for the outside of the pot, I took this chalky spray finish. You can paint on the paint or use the spray paint, and it can be acrylic or the chalk paint. I just prefer to work with chalk paint. And I put it on this Lazy Susan that I used just for crafting. It made it a lot easier to spray paint the whole outside. And I put this large wide rubber band just underneath the rim here on this because I don't want the paint that I am applying to the rim to drip down onto the base of the pot. I have these, this particular size, on my website. There's a whole box of them, and I use them for several other things besides my clay pot projects. So I put this on here. Now I'm going to paint the rim, and I'm using a paint by Maya Gold, and it's got a bit of a metallic shimmer to it there in gem tones. I just added some beautiful new napkins to my website. They're brand new on the market. I haven't seen a lot of these before. And you want to get a paint color that matches or complements your napkins. So I'll put this aside to dry. The paint dries really quickly, and then we'll decoupage. When you're working on a round surface like this, you want to cut a line across the top that is not straight across, but it's a little bit rounded. So when you lay the napkin flush up against the rim like this, you can take a pen or a pencil and just draw a light line where you'll need to cut. And then the last thing you'll want to do is separate your napkin. And so you know, I'm working in panels. So instead of opening one whole napkin, trying to place it down and decoupaging the whole thing on there, which can cause wrinkles, I cut out strips of the napkin that were about five to six inches wide. So now the napkin separated, I'm lining it up to the top there. And while the napkin is dry and the surface of my terracotta pot is dry, I am taking napkin decoupage glue and I am going to apply it to the center of the napkin and work out work my way out. And I get a question every now and then asking me if there really is a difference between napkin decoupage glue and something like Mod Podge or other decoupage glue. But yes, there is a difference. It's a big difference. I recommend you use a napkin decoupage glue when you're working with napkins. It is a more gelatinous substance. It's not nearly as creamy, but that's a good thing. And it seeps right on through the napkin so that you can avoid a lot of the wrinkles. I recommend the Viva Decor napkin decoupage glue, which I have on my website. The link is below. You get two small bottles. And I found when I put these outside using that decoupage glue, it weatherproofs them. And I'll continue to decoupage this. Then I will put it aside to dry. By the way, you want to make sure the background color of your napkin matches the paint color on the terracotta pot. I'm going to take some triple thick and apply this to the whole clay pot 
and I'm adding this Martha Stewart coarse glitter over the surface and again this will be on my website and I'm going to put this aside to dry you've got to make sure if you're going to use this triple thick that you use a bristle brush you cannot use a sponge brush when you're applying this and you don't want to overwork it it starts to dry a little quickly and then you can get streaks so just apply a few strokes and then move on to the next area I'm applying the glitter while this is wet and here's our completed project by the way did you guys subscribe yet if you did thank you so much if you're already subscribed thank you so much that's what keeps me going over here now I didn't have the sunniest of days here you could see some of the glitter but uh, it still looks very very pretty I'm telling you when I keep these in a room in the house where they catch a lot of sun it's the first thing that catches people's eyes they walk into the room and they notice something out of the corner of their eye and they go where did you get this it's so nice to be able to tell them that you made it so this is our project for the week don't forget I am on Patreon. You can find me there at www.patreon.com slash patioelf and I am going to be adding some how-to furniture upcycle videos on Patreon. Those take far too many days to do in order for me to just put them on YouTube. Patreon is a site where you can pay between one, five, or ten dollars. It's up to you per video and you can get the full instructions and I can give you much, much more personalized attention over there. So guys, that's our video for the week. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you again for subscribing. And here are a couple of the projects I posted on Patreon in the last couple of weeks. Thanks again, friends. Bye-bye.